programmatic approach. So uh, we are hoping for some uh, interaction. Uh, the past five months we've been doing uh, action research uh, in um, five countries. Uh, Heidi already introduced us. Uh, we've been working in Nepal, in Central America, in Burkina Faso, in uh, Madagascar, and um, uh, Peru. <laughs> And uh, in uh, this uh, introduction I'm giving you right now, I'm trying to give right now. Uh, we'll start with a short overview of uh, the things we've been done, uh, doing. And uh, after that, I'll introduce to you the hypothesis, uh, which was the beginning of our, uh, uh, which uh, we're on the start of our, uh, our research. So, Mark is going to tell us something about. Um, we we'll start with a short timeline because we, we have been in five different countries, five different programs. There's a sort of come yeah, there you can learn what what it means by that. Um, also, we have got a, several trainings on facilitation methods and facilitation skills. And okay, with all that knowledge, we went to the different countries. In the end of January, we can begin February, um, where of course. Uh, in the beginning, we got to know the different actors that were present in the different coalitions, um, get to know them, do interviews, field trips as methods, visit the several partners. Um, and after the, the first introduction period, um, a period began where we really started to analyze the context. What are the relationships between the different organizations? How do they work together? Uh, what are the results so far? Um, and the analyzation of this context um, also forms the start of a reflection process. So what does this mean? Why are the relationships like this? Uh, yeah, this, the reflection process, um, we did that with, uh, yeah, I think everybody did that with using several uh, reflection workshops, reflection conferences, where we used several methods from participatory video to uh, to your change methods with the four quad quadrant model and the problem tree. Um, and of course this reflection process uh, should result in some action points. Um, and in, in all the cases it did. And this is the last period uh, where the different organizations are already starting with implementing <coughs> these action points. And of course this is a process that started but also continues so yeah, next year is on, and it's a it's it's also a cycle because with the action points and the implementation, there's new action which should be reflected. Okay, and the last two weeks that yeah we are here to combine our common results and produce a report that we're going to share with you all. Working as a coalition can uh, contribute towards systemic change. This is a statement, and uh, we have a question about this statement uh, for you. I would like some uh, reactions. Our question uh, is, what is in your experience uh, a precondition, or what are in uh, your experience uh, preconditions for working towards systemic change as a coalition? What do you think uh, should we be there so you can start working towards that? Well, we actually started a bit earlier uh, and we looked at how uh, coalitions are started. Um, I think everyone knows that ICRA was the main initiator of most coalitions. And uh, very nicely, one of the partners in Central America called this birth error. Birth error. Um, because this, this already from the start creates certain difficulties. Uh, besides that, uh, in the coalition, we found that um, the guidelines that ECO developed for starting a coalition are not always followed. Um, just so going through the steps, I think everyone, everyone knows them, but they're not always followed in, followed in practice. And this leads to um, several challenges. Like there's a lot of confusion about the intentions of ECO with a uh, programmatic approach. There is confusion about to what extent the programmatic approach influences the financial relation with the individual organizations. Um, the coalition is not always clear about the complementarity and like, the win-win situation of being in the coalition. And as a, as a result of that, all, the ownership often is, is quite low, at least in part of the, of the coalitions we visited. 
Um, there's diff we have different examples. For example, in, in, in my coalition, in the coalition in, in Peru, ECO's involvement was very limited. Like they started it and actually just drew back, which led to a lot of confusion and kind of a, like a standstill in development of the coalition. Whereas uh, in Madagascar, I know that um, ECO was involved, but not that much, but it, it's actually led to a lot of, um, uh, but yeah, a lot of ownership. Um, then I think in most coalitions also it's important to note that the role as a capacity developer, uh, ECO as a capacity developer, is still unclear. So that the role uh, as a funder is very big, very clear, but the fact that they also want to help the coalition in, in, uh, in developing themselves and in, 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 in the functioning is, is still not clear for most coalitions. And this leads us, I think, to some of the considerations. Uh, the first that the, the PO or Someone that is close to the coalition needs the skills to monitor the coalition, to facilitate and support the coalition. So, especially to see which coalition coalition needs a lot of support and which maybe can uh, function quite autonomously. Um, then there needs to be clarity. That was, I think, one of the <laughs> words that came back every day uh, in terms of expectations, interests, um, intentions, possibilities uh, from all sides. So. First of all, between the coalition and ECO, uh, and then second, also between the coalition members. But actually, expressing the intention, expressing the limitations, also um, makes things very clear. I saw in, in a poll that in the beginning there was a lot of confusion when um, this was discussed, and when ECO also explained, for example, that they could not give long term permits anymore, long term funding. When it was clear, it was also fine. Like, then the coalition knew when they could work with trades, as I mentioned in the beginning, are essential. Like we think they are very like they are very practical. There's some essential steps in them, but they take time and they need to be monitored and followed. Then the second one, and it's already mentioned, uh, it is very difficult to create equality between ECO and the coalition partners when ECO is the sole funding agency of the coalition. And the other, there was already a remark on this. The other... Yes, yes. Yes. There was not one organization getting all the coalition funds, but all the coalition members contributed to the coalition funds. So that made them more equal, even though that there were a lot of different organizations. In other coalitions, what it was one organization receiving all the money, um, which led to power balances. So from the start, the funding with the funding mechanism, you can already um, try to adjust <laughs> to, to kind of yeah make make the coalition more equal. Um, so yeah, it was role as a sole funder of the coalition influenced power dynamics, which is something that we need to live with. Um, <coughs> um, then receiving organizations might be passive. They might accept ECO, they might accept ECO's wishes and then just look at ECO for um, uh, for what they want to ask for. Yeah. And then um, about uh, the diversification of funding, which can make the coalition more uh, autonomous, more independent, it's uh, by a lot of coalitions seen as an area for the capacity development of ECO to play a bigger role there to help them. What's why, why do you add by ECO? Um, because uh, in our research, as, as I think several coalitions really made this as one of the areas that ECO could help them with, like in their, they didn't feel that a lot of them, that some of them had the right capacities for finding new owners, writing proposals. I, I would feel like the uh, here is too little attention is given to the internal functioning of coalitions. ECHO has a responsibility to support inter-organizational cooperation and should consult with the coalition on how this support will be provided. Is this a rule of ECHO in your opinion? Here, yeah. especially what you've been now, it's, it's a lot about strengthening coalitions with it, which yeah. probably will be a lot. Of yeah, extra. it's funny because we had the same comment yesterday. We also talked about it that yeah. we put extra between <laughs> 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 because it will always be something extra. I, I I agree with you. And this process of internal strengthening takes uh, takes a lot of time from people, especially in the beginning. 
but we do feel that if you don't pay attention to those aspects later on, mm -hmm. you will get you will get problems. So later, if you, especially at the beginning of constructing, building a coalition, pay attention to this internal functioning clarity. That um, in the end, while while you are working towards your goal, uh, it will be way more effective um, when you are internally healthy. Yes, but it does take time. Yeah. yeah. We've only got ten minutes more because. Yeah. I'm possibilities of programmatic cooperation, that it is not necessary to have a shared program as extra activities next to the activities the organizations are already doing, but all coalitions, well almost all coalitions, feel that they are, they are expected to have a, a, a shared program instead of only a shared objective. So this leads to that a lot of organizations feel, well they have to do something extra, a whole new common program. Um, they feel it should be at a national level instead of a grassroots level because it's supposed to be a higher level. And also they feel they really should focus on lobbying instead of uh, field programs. Well, well, everything is possible, but um, well, there's also a lot of unclarity about what a shared program is. So it, it's very wise in, to take time also to talk about what actually cooperation and a shared program is. do not systemize their experiences and all of them lack a proper monitoring and evaluation instrument. Uh, and uh, for the time being we're just continue with uh, the considerations with this challenge. I think the considerations that we mentioned here, we've, we've mentioned them before because um, uh, a lot of things like learning needs to be planned or also coalition building, you, you need time for it. For a lot of things, you need time not just for learning, not just for generating social change, not just for coalition building, everything basically needs time. Um, uh, and it needs to, you need to plan learning, uh, because a lot of people, uh, they might learn a lot from by just doing things, and I think it's, yeah, you can learn things by just doing them, but if you take time to reflect on it and to exchange what you've learned and to exchange how you can maybe do it better the next time, it will improve um, whatever activity you're going to do uh, afterwards. And I think we all notice that within the coalition, not that much time is taken for, for reflection on activities and events. And, um, also, as, as we mentioned to you before, learning is one of the main uh, objectives of the coalition partners, or the, the main added value, what they see. Um, and I think in some coalitions, or at least in the Central American one, because it's also the longest one, I think they they definitely have experienced some learning moments and processes, and also in Madagascar. And in other coalitions it is mentioned, but if you ask what, is, what they've actually learned, not much really has been learned so far. And most probably because they don't really take time for it, it's not planned. Um, or they see learning maybe just as, as gaining information and not as doing something with the information and, and doing things differently as a result. Um, and also because what we saw before, not many of the experiences are systematized. So if people change, if there's other, there are other representatives of the organizations uh, to the coalition, then all the information gets lost or the the organization themselves, the partner organizations, not, they usually have one or two people that are their references for the for their coalition and not the whole uh, organization knows, uh, knows about it. Which is probably impossible because most of the coalition partners are in numerous networks and coalitions, but at least it needs to be institutionalized a bit more. Um, the facilitator, we've mentioned him or her a couple of times before, the importance of a facilitator, someone that knows the coalition partners, knows the strengths and weaknesses of all the coalition partners. This really takes time getting to know all the partners in there. And the coalition partners themselves, they don't have time for this. They don't have time to, in, in Central America, the 15 coalition partners, they don't have time to really get to know all of them and to know all the strengths and weaknesses. And a facilitator can, can help in that process, knowing them, uh, Knowing of all the experiences, uh, being able to interlink these experiences, and if you struggle with that, maybe this person can help you because the organization has an answer to this. So, um, yeah, facilitators is, is very important in this, in this process. I think we've mentioned it before many times. Can I ask one question? Yeah, of course. 
because before you say that the added value, I think you all experienced in your countries that it was sharing of knowledge, etc., mm -hmm. being able to do things different then. But here I see that that, that it's difficult to really learn, that there's not enough time. To, mm -hmm. So uh, I yeah. have an idea is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah when, you, there. when you ask, uh, ask them uh, about the added value, they, they say it's learning, but when you ask Okay, yeah. when you have the precondition that learning is doing things differently, and you ask, okay, what did you do differently in the past few years? There's not coming any answer. So, mm -hmm. so they want to learn. The intention is there, but uh, eventually there's no... Yeah. There's, there's definitely some good experience. <laughs> I think in, in both Madagascar and in Central America, there have been quite a few learning experiences. But in some of the other colleges, probably a bit newer as well. Yeah. Even they've been working together for two years and they can't really mention anything in the mm -hmm. cars. So. And I think that, because I think otherwise you're all going to run out, <laughs> I think the one thing that this action research process has shown, that learning is possible. Mm -hmm. Because you can say that in all of these five coalitions, due to the presence of a, an action, action researcher who's very much focused on promoting learning processes, on reflection processes on, and on uh, engendering change, that has happened. Yeah? There's, in all of these coalitions, real learning processes are starting to, to come up, starting to start. Conditions have been created, but you need to do something for it. It just doesn't happen all by itself. You really need to create conditions for learning to be able to, be, to, to happen do not systemize their experiences and all of them lack a proper monitoring and evaluation instrument. Uh, and uh, for the time being we're just continue with uh, the considerations with this challenge. Um, yeah, I thought you were going uh, so I think a lot of considerations that we mentioned here, we've, we've mentioned them before because um, uh, a lot of things like learning needs to be planned or also coalition building, need, you need time for it. For a lot of things you need time not just for learning, not just for generating social change, not just for coalition building, everything basically needs time. Um, uh, and it needs to, you need to plan learning uh, because a lot of people uh, they might learn a lot from by just doing things, and I think it's, yeah, you can learn things by just doing them. But if you take time to reflect on it and to exchange what you've learned and to exchange how you can maybe do it better the next time, it will improve um, whatever activity you're going to do uh, afterwards. And I think we all notice that within the coalition, not that much time is taken for, for reflection on activities and events. Um, also, as, as we mentioned to you before, learning is one of the main uh, objectives of the coalition partners, or the, the main added value, what they see. Um, and I think in some coalitions, or at least in the Central American one, because it's also the longest one, I think they, they definitely have experienced some learning moments and processes, and also in Madagascar. And in other coalitions it is mentioned, but if you ask what, is, what they've actually learned, not much really has been learned so far. And most probably because they don't really take time for it, it's not planned. Um, or they see learning maybe just as, as gaining information and not as doing something with the information and, and, and doing things differently as a result. Um, and also because what we saw before, not many of the experiences are systematized. So if people change, if there's other, there are other representatives of the organizations uh, to the coalition, then all the information gets lost or the the organization themselves, the partner organizations, not, they usually have one or two people that are their references for the for their coalition and not the whole uh, organization knows, uh, knows about it. Which is probably impossible because most of the coalition partners are in numerous networks and coalitions, but at least it needs to be institutionalized a bit more. Um, what else? The facilitator, we've mentioned him or her a couple of times before. The importance of a facilitator, someone that knows the coalition partners, knows the strengths and weaknesses of all the coalition partners. This really takes time getting to know all the partners in there. And the coalition partners themselves 
they don't have time for this. They don't have time to, in, in Central America, there are 15 coalition partners. They don't have time to really get to know all of them and to know all the strengths and weaknesses. And a facilitator can, can help in that process, knowing them, uh, knowing of all the experiences, uh, being able to interlink these experiences. And if you <coughs> struggle with that, maybe this person can help you because the organization has an answer to this. So, um, yeah, facilitator is, is very important in this. I think mentioned before. <laughs> Can I ask one question? Yeah, of course. Because before you said that the added value, well, I think you all experienced in your countries that it was sharing of knowledge, etc., mm -hmm. being able to do things different then. But here I see that, that that it's difficult to really learn, that there's not enough time. To, mm -hmm. So I yeah. have an idea, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah when, you, there. when you ask her. Ask them uh, about added value, they, they say it's learning, but when you ask, okay, <laughs> when you have the precondition that learning is doing things differently, and you ask, okay, what did you do differently in the past few years, there's not coming any answer. So, so they want to learn, the intention is there, but uh, eventually there's no... There's, de there's definitely some good experience, <laughs> I think, in, in both Madagascar and in Central America, there have been quite a few learning experiences. But in some of the other coalitions, they're probably a bit newer as well. But yeah. even they've been working together for two years and they can't really mention anything in terms mm -hmm. of cards. Well. And I think that, because I think other, but otherwise you're all going to run out, <laughs> I think the one thing that this action research process has shown, that learning is possible. Mm -hmm. Because you can say that in all of these five coalitions, due to the presence of a, an action, action researcher who's very much focused on promoting learning processes, on reflection processes, on, and on uh, engendering change, that has happened. Yeah? There's, in all of these coalitions, real learning processes are starting to, to come up, starting to start. Conditions have been created, but you need to do something for it. It just doesn't happen all by itself. You really need to create conditions for learning to be able to, be, to, to happen. And one of the things that became clear was there were a lot of organizations that were able to produce a lot of shade, but there was not a buyer. And there was sort of the consequence of the more old-fashioned way NGOs helped these organizations to produce without looking at the market side. So the new approach is to include the, the whole value chain, not only the producing organizations. We, we should eventually also that they like the producers, they should profit from this new uh, approach. Because they are still, like, because the main target group. Then you are wondering if you start with a multi stakeholder approach, what will the position of this producing women in this case be? For example, during our multi stakeholder conference, they do not always feel very comfortable or they are illiterate, so it can be difficult. So this is a quote from the participatory video guide, which shows that participatory video can be used to create a more equal footing between the actors involved in a multi-stakeholder process, which was in this case uh, a reason for the action researchers to start a participatory video process uh, with producing women, and eventually, so first letting them to know the camera, going into the communities, talk with other producing women, and eventually show the results during a multi-stakeholder conference. And after the film has been shown, there, there was a discussion between the different actors in the chain present based on the, the movie that the producing women made, so also their perspective. And this is a way in which you can give these women a more equal voice in a multi-stakeholder process. So we saw that really as a strength of the action research, that you can like the dynamical relationship.